is um is uh pleading with union leaders hey come on man let's go back to the bargaining table let's go back to the bargaining table let's talk let's talk don't just throw your hands up in the air as yet just let's let's talk all right let's talk so i'm gonna play i'm gonna play for you some of the union leaders i want to hear your comment to hear your views on it so we're going first uh, i think this is this is not james lambert who is this all right i think he's the the, the, the gentleman for the public servants all right so hear what he has to say um really serves no purpose but to do the negotiation in the public space all right so um negotiations right so let's go again so listen to this one i think this one is um mr batiste all right so we're going to mr batiste first so listen to this one sorry about that it's not an increase as the prime minister is purported you want the person just to be able to get his same back to business and hence a proposal is made that you attempt to negate the impact of inflation on the right, so that's the first union leader. Let's hear the second yeah, union the leader. The country so badly off. Right. I didn't give up all those perks of your office. Right. Because you know what? Even the people who are supposed to be negotiating with the union leaders are negotiating with the union leaders. Right. So he is saying, I want you to hear him again. I want you to hear him again. We're going back. I want you to listen to him carefully. It's not an increase. It's not an increase. It's not an increase. You want the person just to be able to get his same back to the And hence, a proposal is made that you attempt to negate the impact of inflation on the person's income. Right. So he says not an increase, but listen to what he's also proposing. If to the country is so badly off, why don't you give up all those perks of your office and you lead by example? So my question is, and Sister Jenny, if you are listening, you can answer. Does he have any perks? He have any perks as the union leader? I don't know. I'm just asking. But he is saying that the Prime Minister, if the country is so badly off, if the Prime Minister give up some of his perks, they would feel, you think they would feel any better? You think things would turn around? Things would be any different? Just asking. So this is the another trade union leader. You see, the 2% has raised the sleeping giant in workers. Workers are upset. A 2% obviously can in no way compensate over the last eight years for that loss in purchasing power, so it is really too low. I understand your, your demands, but... It, it is a burden that, as an economy, unfortunately, we simply can't afford. Shall be in the field, one shall be to 
Satan. Oh yeah, two shall be at the wheel, only one will fly. Aye, aye. Every stone shall be upturned and false doctrine shaken. While God's truth and His people are lifted high. Yeah. The Father never needed religion or systems of it. His word stands on its own and proves its worth. Yesterday, today, forever. All right, so back with you. Yes, Sister Jenny. Pastor Google, um, listener, I started off by saying 2% is unacceptable. Right. That is a fact. Right. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with it either. Right. I don't have a problem with it either. And right. you know what? You know what? While you're on the line, I want you, I want to put up the um, the thing that you send. I don't know if you could see it while you're online. I want you to. I want to. I want to show the nation and what you were talking about with Kingsley. Are you there with me? Yes, I'm right here. Right. So I want you to explain this chart for us. Right. All right. So. Um, well, I, I won't. I won't go into the, my salient point back then. Was this people are saying and they're outraged about the two percent offer? I was just showing. For the period 2008 to 10, the CPO started off at 1%. PSA the, the, the was asking for 27%. Right. Counter proposal by the CPO. Oh, yes, I'm seeing it here. I'm seeing it here. I'm seeing it here. Right. 2%, one, and that was 1%, exactly. 2%. Right. After the PSA went back to the negotiation table right. several times, right. the CPO moved from 1%. To five percent, yes, and yes. refuse to budge. Yes, when the CPO refused to budge, and we had a minister saying, "Take a five percent and wine to decide." Yes, we come out on the street and we show them we go march. Yes, I was in the marches and them we were taking five percent. At that time, Comrade Lambert was not the independent senator for UNC. And also the vice president of the Senate, while still being the president of Natuk, he was able to secure nine percent for daily rated workers. Wow. He very well knew, along with Rudy and Darcy, who was also there giving a safe seat to go up. Yes, you must remember we are straight up. He was a safe seat, he was a president of the um, sugar workers, however. Wasn't he a MP within that minute um government? Wasn't also Miss Kamara Abdullah? Also, a senator. They, James Lambert got nine percent for daily rated officers. Nothing wrong with that. However, didn't they know that they can't be a pay disparity between monthly paid and daily paid? Because what it would have meant with we getting five percent and daily pay is getting nine percent is that in range seventeen to twenty four in the public service, a laborer, daily paid laborer, would have be getting more money than us, and monthly paid could supervise. Daily rated officers, not so it would have been used as supervisor and getting more money than a deliverer. That is why we were marching. So you tell me James Lambert didn't know them thing. So I continue. When we would have been marching for the five percent, Watson Solomon Juke and there's foot um there's writings to show that the Prime Minister at the time is coming up as a sister, said she was in talks the night before because we had march up in South, I think the Wednesday or something. So she said she was in talks with Watson Solomon Juke and the first vice president at the time, Christopher Joe Field. And back and forth, back and forth. And they settled for 5%. PSA executive members were ordered to come to a signing of, they thought was signing off on allowances. They came down and when they saw the certain prime minister was their first time in history, and then the CPO walked in. Then they realized they were signing an agreement for 5%. Mm-hmm. That's why we said sell out. Juke signed for 5% and he fly out the country. What happened? Because there can be a disparity between daily pay to the 9% and PSA 5%. Watson Solomon Juke had to go back cap in hand to the Minister of Finance who was Winston Dukaran at the time and the CPO to ask for there to be adjustment in the salaries to bring up public officers so that we end up getting the 9%. People need to understand that. I'm going back to Mr. Lambert and they. 
because he was sitting in there with the UNC government. You didn't come out and support public officers when we were marching on the street. They didn't give a directive to the Daily Pay to come and support us. We were out there by ourselves marching. Now the same NATO, who PS is under the umbrella body, and he's the president of NATO. All they want to call March and tell him public officers to come out now, when all they very well know this is the start of a process. If all they want to sit down by the table now, and had three, four meetings and back and forth, back and forth, and the CTO stays at 2% and they want to move, then you come out to we, and I will the first one have my sneakers, they eye in front with my flag and my PSA jersey, walking hand in hand with the executive of PSA. Beautiful. And I'm sure the officers will do that. Thank but, you. But those are them really for fools, right? So I just wanted to put that on the table. Thank you very much. Why do I shoot? That is people so, Mr. Kingsley, what's an apology, Mr. Kingsley? Kingsley, look, the fax is right behind me. If you want to see the fax, come on to Facebook, come on to YouTube, Mr. Kingsley. You owe Sister Jenny and the listeners of Constructive Talk an apology, Kingsley. Right? Look at right here. It's right behind me, Kingsley. All right? I have some guests that's coming into the studio. I'm going to organize for them to come in. So I'll hold up on the calls a little bit. So I have some guests that is going to come in the studio, and they're going to talk to us about something that we're talking about. All right? So don't touch your dial. Stay right there. All right? Stay right there, children, to be. Don't touch your dial.
shall be in the field, one shall be chosen. Oh yeah, two shall be at the wheel, only one will fly. Yeah, yeah. Politicians, politicians, atheists, etc. Deny God or decide to just patronize. Hey, they tolerate Christianity as just a social matter to bury for marriage and to baptize. Hey, man, check the first two presidents of the United States. Of- All right, Chill and Tobago, so I'm back with you here live on the Shoot Down NFM. If you join me on Facebook, and on YouTube, you will see that I have two guests in studio with me, all right? And um, strange enough, they're here just at the point in time where I'm discussing the unions and um, the protest that is about to happen on Friday. And um, there are some questions that, you know, they, they may be here to clear up. Um, they might be here to, I don't know. I, I, I got a good a call from one of my good friends, my colleagues, and he said to me, Google, you know, inter- um, could you interview um, two guests for me, please? I said, I, 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 there's, there's a house that we, we, uh, we encourage um, visitors and have people come in from time to time. So tell us who you all are, what you all are about. Um, we have the discussion on the, in the public front now is about the protest is about um, public servants and workers are happy with the two percent offer a lot of people are happy with the two percent offer but we want to hear we're hearing from you now because I, I just have about and I let you know have about 20 less than 20 minutes right left on air so I'm giving you an opportunity to share with you and to be good what what is what is happening in the labor front Okay, so first let me say good morning to everyone. Good morning to good the morning. public. Good morning to you, host. Mm-hmm. Um, my name is Rupert Ryan Chan. I'm the General Secretary of the Transport and Industrial Workers Union. And I have with me Miss Gaitri Lindsay, one of our union branch officers. The CUAD? General Secretary. General Secretary. Yeah. All right. Miss mm-hmm. um, Lindsay comes from the M- she represents MTS workers. Oh, MTS. Yes. Right. Um, okay. So we um our two major RMUs are the PTSC right. and the MTS. So we will represent the bus workers and the maintenance service workers. Okay. Okay. So your very interesting was to enlighten about Yeah, the listeners about cuz I use the coach from time to time. So I travel from south. I tra- either use the coach or I use mm-hmm. the water taxi. So, from time to time, I do use the coach. What? Very interesting. Let me, let me, let me. It's a good, it's um, interesting. I want to ask Ms. Lindsay to speak about the MTS. Right, the MTS workers, workers right. We'll, we'll go on later. Sure. Let me hear the, let, let me, let, let's hear the young lady. Well, at MTS, as you, everybody know, we work very hard. All right. We cover our grounds, which is... We, we we disinfect schools to okay. keep our children safe. Oh, so you all do the cleaning aspect. You will do the maintenance, with clean and maintenance aspect, aspect right? Of the schools, right? right? So, and we also we are in ministries, courts. We well, we we do represent. We don't represent the security, but they okay. also have security in MTS. Mm-hmm. However, what the government is offering, we just simply cannot accept. Okay. The reason is our. Our pay is sixteen ninety two a fortnight. Sixteen hundred dollars and ninety two. Sixteen hundred and ninety two dollars. Yeah. How are you surviving on that? Right. And rent is three thousand dollars a month mm-hmm. and up. Mm-hmm. How are you feeding your children? Right. How are you getting to work with the spike in the gas prices? Mm-hmm. You understand? So we simply we we we're not accepting mm-hmm. that two percent 
that he's given to us because he said for himself he need his money and he need it on time we also need our money and need it on time because we worked for this we all right. this what we begging and here and pleading with the prime minister for we would have already worked for and it is owed to us and we are entitled to an increase because right. it's since 2014 our collective agreement has expired so we we, we have negotiations that pending and because he wouldn't release the funds we can't do so so our staff currently suffering and nobody cares and we are the essential workers when when through the pandemic he was out there praising the essential workers now that the essential workers need their money mind you me we wasn't offered this the two percent you know because we are a statutory body we are not public servants so how much you are offered we are not offered as yet but when your neighbor okay. house on fire you need to wear on yours Okay, so you all haven't yet sat down no. to negotiate as yet with no. the CPO? No. Okay. But if that's what he's doing to public servants, then what would he do to our statutory body? Okay, so from what we understand, all right, mm -hmm. tell me if you're wrong. This is this, the, the bargaining aspect. So they offered 2%. They offered the, the, yes. the public servants 2%. Mm -hmm. And it's now for them to come and, and bargain on behalf of their workers to get more than 2%. Yes, that's how, yes, bargaining that's how, it's that's how collective bargaining goes. Rules. So, yes. that, and, and so, the, so they have reached the point where now they are at the point of bargaining. So, because I, I just had someone on the air, um, but she's a public servant mm -hmm. belonging to PSC, and she was saying, right. she said her sneakers done ready to move if the government, moving from the 2%. She's willing to go out and protest. And they have to be ready because our unions are only as strong as our members. Mm -hmm. So if it is the public servants put down their foot and show the Prime Minister that we're really not taking this 2%, then he would have to adhere to what us, the public, is saying because he cannot leave his minister's office and empty all those bins. He can't go and do all those requisitions and the different documents that the, the, these public servants work so hard every day to send out. So what, is, what, is, what has your union starting what what is what are you all proposing what is your starting discussion with the cpo is because i know that you as you said you all haven't gotten a proposal as yes. yet but you, i'm sure that you will have in your mind yes what is your um proposal okay so let me just back up a bit right, right. earlier on the uh, the government announced that they wanted to close off outstanding negotiations right with all the, the various unions we are under natuk Right, um, we are one of the unions under NATO. Right. Mm -hmm. So the the government had re reached out to some of the unions under NATO with that offer of zero zero for the previous years, mm -hmm. which is from about 2014 or there about 2013, mm -hmm. 2014. Mm -hmm. Right, and the last period consisting of three years, um, those for those years they are offering one percent. For the first year, zero percent for the second year, and one percent for the third year, right? Mm -hmm. And that was offered to the other unions. So we anticipate the same, a similar offer would be made to us, and and that is, um, Natuk has decided to take a position on that, take a stand on that. Um, that is really an insult. It's just not a workable. It's just, it's just not workable. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't meet with with what is happening now gas price rising gas prices food prices and there are a lot of issues this would this has yes. a rippling effect mm -hmm. and um it it's just usually when our offer is made that's that's a benchmark like a starting point where we're going to start a reference point where we're going to negotiate from right when it is that low you know it doesn't re leave much room to go lower than that right mm -hmm. right or or to, to maneuver from how how it, it begs the question how far are you going to even go from one percent and zero percent and and one percent you know you can't go lower than zero no. right <laughs> you can't go lower than no. zero you have to go up yeah yes so anything so like one percent um zero percent the only the only movement it could be upward movement alone exactly. <laughs> right so um so you all are just put it as you said you're waiting your house before the house well, we are joining in solidarity yes. with the other okay. unions it's okay. a NATO initiative mm -hmm. that we are having this march mm -hmm. because when is the um, march it's supposed to be on friday the 27th right what time is the march nine nine nine, nine in the morning yes we are gathering at the memorial park 
Okay. And then we will go west around the Savannah. Mm -hmm. We turn in left onto Sinclair Avenue. Mm -hmm. Turn left onto Alexander Street. From Alexander Street, we turn in onto Chagrit Road. Along Chagrit Road, turning right to Green Corner. Right. And then onto St. Vincent Street. Right. Then we're making a left at St. Vincent Street. Onto Independence Square. Around Cipriani Statue, we must we must go around Cipriani Statue. Mm -hmm. West along Independence Square, and we're accumulating at the promenade opposite the financial complex. Okay. And is there going to be speakers? Anybody yes, going to be of course. We'll okay. have speakers at this time. I can't reiterate to you who the speakers would be. Okay. But we, we are expecting, we are calling on... All the unions, the government workers, the daily rated workers, the monthly paid, the port workers, we call out everybody because this doesn't only affect one body of workers, it affects the entire country, right? right. So we're asking everybody, unemployed, unemployed, mm -hmm. because even if you don't work in the public sector, you have an aunt, an uncle, a mom, a dad, a sister, somebody that work in the public sector that would be adversely affected by this decision. You know, there are some people, and I just want to throw this in, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there are some people who, is, who may be sitting around in their homes or in a taxi or maxi who may just come out from a government office yeah. and wasn't served properly. I might be saying, I'm not and I'm saying, what the chill are you really hearing here, boy? You know, there are people who are like that. Yeah, but then, again, to remember, the, the public servants, they're under a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. Day to day, they're under a lot of pressure. It would look as if, right, they're coming out and they had this work, and, but they're under a lot of pressure right now, right. currently. Right. Some of them, they can't get shut down and they're coming to work in the morning. They're under but, a lot of pressure. But some people would say, in spite of all of that, they think that they should treat the public a little better. Yeah, they probably should, but that is not for me and you to deliberate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, so, to Friday, yeah. 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. Memorial, uh, Memorial Park. Um, so you're calling out all workers. All workers, so everybody. So you think I should come off the NRD? Yes, you <laughs> can come and join us in solidarity. No, I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. But, um, what are some of the issues? Cause while I'm looking to close in a little bit, but what are some of the issues that PTSD workers are are, um, are confronted with? Because I, I would ask you, but what are some of the issues that some of, just, just briefly some of the issues that PTSD workers would want to see addressed and and um you know? Well, this this rally is to address wage negotiations, as I um, iterated before, it's a NATO initiative to deal mainly with wage negotiation. Now, the PTSC workers have been working on 2014 salaries, right? And we are in 2022, okay? During that period, mm -hmm. right, prices have doubled, tripled in some cases, food prices, we're looking at fuel prices, cost of living, right? There, and just to mention a few, and this, these things have a rippling effect. Because while it is here, we're looking at the, the working person, the breadwinner of the family. He has dependence, right, yes. to provide that, that salary is to provide a, a standard of living, a quality lifestyle for his siblings, his children, his family. These things impact directly on the, the moral aspect of our nation, right? right? You know, a, a, a young man, a, a young woman wants to know her father working to buy, you know, things for her, her growing up, you know, woman stuff. A young man wants to know that, that, that role model, he has a father who works and earns a living, you know, so he can, you know, uh, emulate that, that model, right? Um, so we have to ask ourselves from 2014 to now, has the standard of living increased or decreased for citizens? This is an issue that is not only affecting the working class, but citizens on the whole. And we are calling on all citizens to come out and support this initiative, right? And let people's voice be heard. We are sinking deeper and deeper into the mire at this point. Okay. What are some of the issues that you will have confronted with from time to time? At MTS? Yeah. When you say issues, you mean our everyday? Yeah. Oh, we sometimes we have clients that think that we're slaves. That's the first thing. Then our salary isn't enough to live on. We can't even take out our aqua, you know. You know that? We can't take out our aqua. Then we have rent to pay. Then we do sometimes we do have the necessary tools to perform the duties. We still have to perform the duties. You know, then they had you see during COVID, the poor workers they had so many duties added. And they still managed 
to perform these duties adequately. And now for the Prime Minister to come and give public servants 2%, and we knowing we're a statutory body, he could go less on us and tell us 000, zero, zero and we're not standing up for that. Okay. Okay. So, Friday. Friday, we're hoping to see you. Me? <laughs> no, ma'am, I would not be able to make it on Friday. I never, I may not be able to make it on Friday, but Friday at 9 a.m., you are a gathering up by Memorial Park. Yes. And you, you are supporting your colleagues. Yes, we are. All right. We're standing in solidarity with our colleagues, with our comrades. Okay. You want to take some calls? Um, Mr. Rupcham, answer that one. Mr. Rupcham? Um, well, sure. All right. So you want to probably four lines? And you take some calls, 342-0081. Let's hear what the public have to say. 342-0081-771-1791-466-5391. The number is the call. Right, so I'm going with first set of calls. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon again, Pastor. Good afternoon to my comrades here. Right, so there's a union lady, yeah. Yes. I did not, I um, will support any match after the union go to the third stage of the negotiation process, go back to the CPO after the CPO 2% ridiculous offer and go back and sit at the table. And if after meeting with the CPO now on either one, two or three occasions and the CPO refused to budge, then you see the absence of that, you see the gas lighting. I am a unionist and I stand firm with my PS and I believe in unionism, but I will not be led down a path where people are not telling the members the truth. Yes, we deserve our money. We haven't got an increase since 2013. And while Leroy Batista PSA talking about the government gave me crumbs, I want to ask him if your salary is $55,000 a month. Is the Rain Roger PSA leasing for you $10,000 a month? Is your lunch bill every day $500 a month? Because it seems to see you living in luxury while we eating crumbs. So let me be real. And sister, I hear you. I give you your support. The gentleman there also. But I am coming out to march and I encourage my comrades, don't come out tomorrow unless, just as the police um, association is telling the members, they're going back to the CPU and then stay tuned. Do that first before they start to tell people come out because 2% because in 2010, if 1%, the CPU was all saying nobody can come out in the road for that and then it moved to 5%. Let me be real and tell the truth. I'm gone. All right, let's take the right. next one. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Pastor. So we just now, so that was a union person who called in. Yes, she's right. supporting you, you know. Yes, I, I, I agree <laughs> with her. She, but what she doesn't understand is that the union, us, the, the, the leaders of the union, we're only as strong as our membership. Okay. And if you don't come out on the road and march with us, then we may not get that meeting that she's looking forward to. Okay, hello, good garbage. afternoon. Garbage, garbage, Pastor Google. That is garbage. <laughs> Well, you now say the young lady is garbage. That meeting is, is compulsory. Who are you talking to, ma'am? I understand so what you you're something. saying, you know, but the that, current I state... Want, you, you, are, you all are gaslighting the situation. So huh? when you come in the tell me that, it makes no sense at all. All right. So let me explain you something. All right, let me take a next. Hello, good afternoon. It, 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 we have a, a, a failure leadership in this country because I'll tell you why, eh? This young lady is gaslighting as uh, Mr. Barata yes, says. Yeah. First of all, the Prime Minister is not responsible for negotiations. Second of all, the government has given a gift in this time of hardship to all public servants, which was we will take our own medicine and not cut jobs in the public service. So my question to this young lady is, do you prefer a 10% or 15% raise with cuts in employment or do you prefer the pay that you have now and you and your colleagues remain employed? All right. Right? Thank it's you. the CPO and the Minister of Finance who does negotiations. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, good afternoon. Let me just take this. Mm -hmm. Hello, good uh, afternoon. Good afternoon, Pastor Google. Good afternoon. Yeah. Um, but the call that call, the full call that call. How much time the union sit down to negotiate from 2013 till now and they get 2%? How much time they sit down? First they get 0, 0, 0 percent, then they get 1 percent, then they get 0 percent, then they get 1 percent again. How much time from 2013 to now without any matching? 
how can he protest it? How can he contest it? How much time is it? It's about time for at least the people to come out and, 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 and do something that the government see. It's seriousness. It's not a matter of hating the government or loving the government. It's time for them to come out. People go out there and let the government know, hey, this thing is real reality. Apparently, they want to pack up and go, and, and they can't pack up and go. They have to, to, to stay until 2025. Right. But they must do something. The union must do something. All right, thank you very much. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Ma'am, how many times have you all met with the CPO? Once. Once? Once? No. How, Since, how many times? Once? Since, okay. In what period are you speaking about, sir? I'm talking about this year. Since it was announced that you all had to meet with the okay. CPO by the, by the finance minister. How many times have you all met with the CPO? I think what they're saying is that they, they haven't met there as hasn't yet. Been any they haven't met us yet. So I think they, they're going to meet to the CPO. But what they're saying is that when they watch what the um, public servants are being offered, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, eh? Yes, that's exactly if, what if, you're if, if you all, um, if, what they're saying is that when they watch what the public servants are being offered, they are taking in front and saying, hear what? We are not accepting that. But this is something called collective bargaining. Bargain. You have not even met with the CPO, and you're going to march. You have not, you, 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 you have not even put an offer on the table for you all. And you, you, hear, you heard the first or initial offer by the CPO, and you're going to march, ma'am. All right, okay. time, go ahead. Ready? Time, time, go ahead. Go ahead. I would like to respond and clear up. There seem to be a lot of misunderstanding and misconception. Yes. My, my time, go ahead. Yeah, that was my okay. time. So this this interview here is to highlight. Yeah. In Natuk rally on Friday 27th, mm -hmm. this union is in joining in solidarity with that union for this initiative, for that march on Friday. Right. So that's the purpose of this program. All right. So thank you very much for being with me. And I know that you all will come back. When you all go before the CPO, I'm giving you all an open invitation. When you all go before the CPO and you all do all the collective bargaining, I invite you back. Okay. On this program, not a Tuesday though, come a Thursday around lunchtime. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you that privilege, right? Cool? All right. You, all, you, you agree with me? Yes. yes. All right. I'm looking forward to seeing all you. John chapter 8, verse 32 says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Tune in to the Street 91.9 FM every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. for the program Walking in Truth with me, Pastor Gary Grant from Walking in the Spirit Ministries. Come, let's discuss how Christ Jesus can set you free. God bless you. If your hands are anointed, Shalom. The Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge under Commanding General Yahana will be on the street, 91.9 FM, every Monday from 7.05 p.m. to 8 p.m., bringing you the truth according to the Bible. The ISUPK is a non-profit faith-based community organization that will respond to the plagues that's affecting blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. We also have programs such as education, both adult and youth, food distribution, rehabilitation, both drug and alcohol, mentoring, counseling, and spiritual support. Remember, tune in every Monday from 91.9 FM, 7.05 p.m. Are you ready for that book experience again? The Sea Champion and the Embassy say, Look with us for that unforgettable boat ride experience. Sea Champion leaving from Kings Wharf, San Fernando, and the Embassy leaving from Breakfast Shed, Port of Spain, or West Side Trinidad. For more information, call 399 5959 814723 or email us at coralvisiontt at gmail.com. Book now and reserve your cruise. And I'm going to tell you that.
Pastor Hannah A. Pabu of Holy Spirit Ministries will be live on the street 919 FM every Wednesday from 11.15 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. In the scripture, Matthew 19, verse 26, the Bible says, But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Pastor Hannah is here to motivate you, challenge you, encourage you to walk in your purpose and destiny God has for you. For prayer and counseling call, Pastor Hannah at 728-5197. If you're experiencing pain, constipation, headaches, or blood circulation, high or low blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, swollen, or darkened feet, come visit us at Health and Wealth Lifestyle, located at 73 Eastern Main Road, Barataria, opposite Eastern Credit Union. We at Health and Wealth Lifestyle offer a wide range of services. Come and experience our new 3D analyzer, which allows you to have a look inside your body. We also provide live blood analysis, iridology, ionic foot detox with foot soap and foot massage, aqua therapy, full body massage and organic supplements on sale such as nano silver, nano zinc, body light, cold press sesame oil and more. Health and Wealth Lifestyle located at number 73 Eastern Main Road Barataria opposite Eastern Credit Union. For more information call 275-8359 or 288-1108. Join Nicole Huggins for Health and Wealth Lifestyle every Monday from 9.05 a.m. to 9.55 a.m. right here on the street, 919 FM. This is Wayne Delamore, head consultant and director of Natural Health Solution. With over 15 years of experience in clinical nutrition and microscopy, we specialize in early detection and prevention. We incorporate evidence-based nutrition and science-driven analysis. Tune in to our educational program every Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Right here on the street, 91.9 FM. For appointments, call 222-2189 or 304-5816. At Natural Health Solutions, we offer a natural solution to healthy living. Hey guys, it's Aisha Wells here. Listen up. If you're considering selling or renting your house in Trinidad and Tobago, then call Keelan George with O'Neill's Real Estate Group. He's a good friend of mine and he's been in the business for over six years. First, selling real estate in Atlanta, Georgia, and now right here in Trinidad and Tobago. He has a strategic online marketing presence that actually attracts thousands of home buyers and renters. Plus, with his home selling advice and techniques, he's getting homes sold really fast. Keelan will actually guarantee you sell your home or, get this, you can cancel the listing agreement and pay nothing at any time. That's right, you heard me, nothing at any time. Selling your home doesn't have to be stressful, people. Check out www.oneilrealestatet.com. O'Neill is spelled O-N-E-I-L or just call Kilon direct at 363-4030. That's 363-4030. Share the line. Share the line. The Street 919 FM on Facebook and Instagram. Share the line. Iowa George on Instagram. Share the line. Iowa TV and Street Street TV on YouTube. Share the line. The Street 919 FM. This is Bishop Aaron Williams from the Divine Problem Solving International Ministries inviting you to be part of our broadcast on any given Thursday night from 12 midnight right on to 5 a.m. on Friday morning. And this broadcast is called Early Morning Gospel Market Program. Then we have on Tuesday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. the Holy Ghost Gospel Pharmacy. If you are sick and ailing, you can get from this particular pharmacy from the pharmacist the good things of life. Hallelujah. And any Saturday from 10 a.m to 12 noon. Break into the host of the Philistines. Hallelujah. If you are sick and tired of being sick and tired of hearing the Babel of false doctrines that you encounter daily, it's about time you get close to God. God's word direct from his throne room in the name of Jesus. God has good plans for his people. Why do you worry so much? All right, trying to be because I take you live now to Bishop Ivan Williams who we have online. <laughs> Oh, praise the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to bless your name, give you praises and thanks for the gift of life another day. 
the Lord is delivering them my prayers and supplication and all those who are locked on. We are sheet nine one point nine FM listening to this podcast, Holy Ghost Gospel Pharmacy. Oh God, I thank you for the gift of life for all of us. In the name of Jesus, oh God, once there's life, I know there's hope. You being the pharmacist of all pharmacists, oh God, probably approach your pharmacy today, oh God, asking me for medication to suit our complaint. Those, oh God, who have never learned to love the world, those who have lost the love they had, oh Father, and can meet them at the point of the need of this circumstance of this situation where people are crying out to you, oh God, because you should call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know is nothing about. Father, and when as we cry unto you, blessed God, Father, hear our prayer, oh God, we believe in your word. It's not a man that you shall lie, oh God, and it's like a healing device to take a, to come into our life, oh God, and assist us. Father, this time when I went this coronavirus, oh God, your people, oh God, are living in a lot of doubt and uncertainty, oh God. Father, let your word have its way. Let your word, oh God, go to somebody's life today and give them assurance that you are Lord of Lords and King of Kings. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the Bishop uh, Aaron from the Divine Problem Solving International Ministries. Hallelujah. And coming out of this ministry, this podcast, the Holy Ghost Gospel Pharmacy. Uh, that is here every uh, Tuesday around this time. And also, we have also on a Tuesday night, we have uh, the early morning gospel market program from midnight Tuesday night to, to, to uh, 5 p.m. in the Friday morning. Then we have on Saturday breaking through the holes of the Philistines from 10 in the a.m. to 12. Hallelujah. We praise God this morning. Anybody want to keep this broadcast in here, we welcome you. We appreciate your thoughts about the ministry. And uh, you could go to any post citizens bank. The account number is 149. One four six one. One four nine. One four six one. Hallelujah. Also, my two books are uh, the very large and irrevocable substitutes. Also, testimonial boulevard. Those two books were done last year in the pandemic. And there's two books that you need to get, especially those of you that have young people given trouble. The sons and the daughters given trouble. It's even good for you yourself because you overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And you can get these books at Jamal's Watch Repair and uh, Jewelry Store. This is downstairs uh, Town Center Mall. As you're going to watch Second Street Jamal's uh, watch repair and jewelry store. Hallelujah. As you go to watch Second Street downstairs Town Center Mall. Then you have Auntie P's restaurant. This is uh, 1B Real Street. And this is in the uh, crazy. Just by the wide there, the old road and the, the other roads, just opposite um, and the clothing store there. And then I have Ellis Enterprises, a household and hardware articles you could get there. This is at 1B, uh, uh, 14 Post Street, San Juan. 14 Post Street, San Juan. Hallelujah. And then you have Carl and Jennifer's Enterprises. And this is at Contact Plaza in Aruka, just between uh, uh, KFC and um, Sunshine Newspapers. The same amount of Sunshine Newspaper, you can get these books there. We bless you today. Those of you that should, uh, support this ministry, we thank you for the years you have been there with us. Hallelujah. And has brought us to this point, oh God, financially. And we are blessing your prayer. We thank you very, very much. As we're about to get into the word of God today, I pray, God, that the Spirit of God moves mightily in your life, regardless of whatever the circumstances that you will understand. Uh, we are dealing with 
uh, a difficult time and we have the scripture to really relate to such a time. So we go straight into the book of Joel. When I read chapter 1, hallelujah. The book of Joel chapter 1, the word of the Lord came to Joel the son of Petuel. Here they see all men, and give here all the inhabitants of the land. For this being in your days, or even in the days of your fathers, tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. Verse 4. That which the palmer worm has left had the locusts eaten, and that which the locusts have left had the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm has left had the caterpillar eaten. Awake, eat drunkards, and reap and howl, all these drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation has come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he had the cheek teeth of a great lion. Hallelujah. We are seeing here today, Father, we thank you for your word. But to reduce this word, O oh God, will reveal this sword, O oh God, will bring this stuff of bread to feed somebody, to heal somebody in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My topic today is God is about to put in the reverse gear. I say Regardless of what situation we confront us, COVID or no COVID, because even before COVID, there was difficulty. God is said. He's about to put in the reverse gear. What Joel is telling us today 